So we're now into the first week of June and I thought I'd just walk around the garden again, do a walk through again, because as I say, things grow so fast at this time of year. And I thought I'd do a, what I'm going to call a flower walk through, just to see what's in flower at this present time. So we'll, we'll take a look at different things and I'll try not to talk too long about each one. This is Digitalis purpurea. And that's quite, that's about the deepest one I've got in this garden. And not far from it, I've got a white one. So Digitalis purpurea, irrespective of, it, of its name, produces both purple and white flowers and all the colours or all the shades in between. The foxgloves are good for everything. They look good in cottage gardens, wild gardens, wild areas. But they also look good in just ordinary borders and they also look good with grasses and this one this particular one's planted itself with a bamboo i didn't put it there i only ever spread seed originally and that brought up about four or five plants and then year on year they're they're producing more but it does look really good here's the white one it's got a lovely throat to it that one and that's not a million miles away from it but that's looking good and as I said digitalis purpurea can produce all sorts of colors now while we're talking about all sorts of colors let's go to this this is geranium don't know what it is it's the one I explained came in this box edging and it's still there despite my efforts to remove it last year it's grown back again and I thought I'd got rid of a lot of it so there's obviously a tiny little root in there still now I have shown this to my friend who did name it, or he thought it was a certain name, but I don't know, it has this weird look about it, it has, on the odd flower it has some purpley looking petals as you can see there, but the majority are white, so I don't know which geranium it is, but it looks alright, and I'm not going to move it, there's no point, absolutely no point in moving that at all got the welsh poppies lots of people have these in the garden i never planted them they were already here and but they're looking good so it's this plant's turn to flower next amish attacking me um and this is called Ver uh, valeriana officinalis and for those that don't know anything with the with the name officinalis at the end of it means it's been used for some sort of a medicinal purpose now this Yep, starting to come now has a lovely, lovely scent to it. And it's a beauty. And I just like the look of it. I like it, again, because it goes with ornamental grasses and other perennials. So that's flowering at the moment. And once it flowers, it will set seeds around. Never has yet for me. But that's my fault because I've been working in this area. And building up, building it up. To try and level it out, really. But that's a nice flower very sturdy as well and when it first comes up that plant it has a purple stem which makes it look interesting again i see there's another another digitalis there or fox club that's looking nice geraniums all the geraniums are flowering well at the moment or a lot of my geraniums are i think this one is sirac i'm sure it's sirac and that's another nice one And then Astrantes, which have been flowering some time now, doing really well. That's a Jill Richardson selection by the Plantsman's Preference. And that's a really nice plant. That's looking really good at the moment. Very dark flower indeed. So that's nice. And we'll have a look at one or two others of those as we go around. Now this, although it's not in flower yet, this Raponticum, Raponticum centraudis, is producing these which are paper like really when you I don't know if you can hear that if I that's how it sounds it's like a paper like flower at the moment but it's just a ball and then what will happen in about another month and I see on social media on some people's posts that this one's already flowering down south but we're further up England so it's not it's not doing it yet it's being held back we're a little bit further back than they are and it will produce a bright pink flower or oh, the 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 little sepals will come through and they'll be bright pink on the top of that. And they will look lovely. Also, it's GM time. This is a new one in. This is the only one that I used to have, which was 
Mrs. Bradshaw, and I quite like it. Quite like Mrs. Bradshaw. It's a good, reliable doer, and that's why I have it in my garden. I just let it self seed around, let it do its thing. So we're up in the gravel area at the minute. And this Ashfodaline Lutea, don't forget we're doing a flower walkthrough. It's looking really good, exceptionally well this year. It's really nice, produces these. And, you know, not everybody's cup of tea put um, yellow flowers, and they're, they're not really mine, to be honest, but I quite like this one. That looks really good. And this one here, I've shown you before, and it seems to keep flowering. And this is an Anchusa. See how close we can get. Oh yeah, look, there you go. Look at that. I mean, that is it is a superb plant. And it's Azurea and Loden Loden Crown, that one. So that's Anchusa Azurea Loden Crown. Really nice. I'm told it may not come back next year. It may simply set seed, but I live in hope that it will because I've planted it in the best position I can give it at the moment. Now, I like this geranium a lot. In fact, we'll show you the bigger one. I'll show you this one. So this is Lily Lovell. And it's a phaeum, so it'll do well in a shady area as well as this. It's probably not going to focus for me. But it's a nice shade. I like this one. Doesn't want to focus in on me. There we go. That's a bit, bit better, but that's the back of it. So that's a geranium Lily Lovell. Looking really nice. This is Veronica, one I believe to be a seedling of Shirley Blue. It's just got this lovely look. It's very diminutive, this one. I think it looked good in a gravel garden. Well, it isn't virtually next to the gravel garden, but I think it looked good in a gravel garden. Gravel around it. Or in an alpine garden, I think it looked good there. But it has this lovely colour. See if we can pick that up. If it'll stop moving. So that's really nice. A lovely deep blue. Now this is uh, Allium Shonaprasum. As I always say, it's just a chive. It's now chives time. Don't forget the alliums are flowering and this is an allium. So the bees are loving it as well. As you can see. And I, I want to call this bubblegum. It's not a cultivar. I just pulled it out of somebody's garden. But I just like... Just like the look of it and the sound of bubblegum as a name for it. Uh, what else we got up here? Oh, yeah. One or two bits. Netroscordum siculum. I showed you the other day. You can see it's called honey bells. There's the flowers. Not focusing. Well, there you go. They're, they're really nice. They're from a bulb. And they're really nice. And I can't smell it. Its common name is honey bells, but I can't. I can't really smell that. Now, obviously, the euphorbies are still flowering. And I'm getting ready to remove the flowers now because I don't want them all over the place. And if, you, if, I, left, if I left every one of them, I'd have hundreds of seedlings around. Now, this one is Allium atropurpureum. It's not out fully yet. And it's one of the few Alliums that have a lovely scent. Now, for me... Oh, it does smell good as well, even at that size and it's not fully out, it's smelling lovely. But for me, these Aliomatic Perperims, they don't, they don't do very well for me. They, they seem to, I don't know, they just don't like it. I think they're going to like a, a lot richer area than I'm giving them. I'm going to suss where I've put them all, mark them all, I'm going to lift them once they've finished and I'm going to try and give them a better area to live in. Uh, shrubs, shrubs, shrubs. Physocarpus, and I think it's Little Devil. It's producing the flower buds. They're not out yet, but they're nearly there, so we might as well include it. And this is a lovely little shrub. If you haven't got much space, this is probably a good one to go for. So that's looking really good. Let's have a zoom around before we move on, see if there's anything else worth bringing to your attention. Uh, not out yet, not out, not out. I must say this year, all my pine trees have put on the most growth I've ever seen in one year. This has put on at least seven inches of growth. And there's its 
suppose we could include this because that is really its flower. Although it's a comb, it's still a flower. And that's nice. And they're all doing that this year. They're all doing really, really well. This is Dormir. It's a shame it's not out yet. So we can't really show you a flower, but you can see where the flowers are about to pop from. That's doing the best it's ever done yet. More geraniums. And this could now possibly be Syrac. I don't know. It's definitely a stri striatum type, as you can see from the flower. Really nice. So some geraniums can be little diminutive things of about six inches and then you get monsters up to four or five foot this is kind of midway of that this was already here that's why i don't know which one it is so i can't really name it i think i'll include this because although it's a grass this is cecilaria nitida to me the seed heads are flowers so for me that's a flower and it's doing really well this one new to me last year and I really do like this one. I really do rate it now. And I hope some of those seeds will self-set. I will pick some of them and hopefully get them going. Hopefully. So this is geranium. Another geranium. One of my favourites actually. This is Anne Folcard. And it has that lovely deep sort of red cerise colour. It's a beauty. And its leaves will be more yellow as it gets a mature, a more mature specimen anyway. I'll do my usual pulling up a few weeds while we're in here. I've got lots of cooch grass in this garden. Hate it, but it's all right. It's all right to clear out. So, sorry about that. Okay, so... This is Achillea Moonshine. I love this one. I said before, it can be quite floppy and it's proving to do just that again. Now, I had meant to put it more, more enclosed, really. Put it in with, uh, put it in with all the plants that could support it. I mean, at the moment, the Silicta Trichon supporting that side of it. Really, I should have put it through a bit of a grid to keep it upright. It's it's only failing really, but apart from that, it's a nice one because it's a butterfly magnet. Once it gets coming out into flower properly, more geraniums. What we got here? This is Syrac again. I've got quite a few little baby Syracs. We've just dotted them all over the garden, so that's doing all right. Now this is one of the whip cord ebis. So all we're doing, we're doing. A flowery sort of perennial talk this really needs including it's, it's a shrub but it's looking lovely so it's a whipcord hebe and i've three of these in here which is really nice i'm looking to see if it's a particular variety but it's not it's just ocaria which is the standard one but there is one called james sterling that i used to have that looks very similar and i quite like hebes as long as they're hardy but this is really now the only type that I've got and the only type I would really bother with. Alliums. Now, it is allium season, so we're not going to be able to walk around the garden without actually seeing alliums. And I'm not sure now on this one whether this one is actually gladiator, which is slightly smaller than the one I thought it was. Which one did I think it was? Globemaster, but I don't think this is Globemaster. I think it's Gladiator. But nevertheless, it's a beauty. A little beauty. So, Rium Palmatum. I'm sorry, Rium. This is Rium Australe. The Chinese rhubarb. Not a rhubarb you can eat. But produces these lovely creamy coloured flowers. Which look wonderful. Especially with the allium as its backdrop. Looks nice, though. Good combination. Okay, this is a Circeum, Rivulare Atropurpureum. And it's a real good do of this. It's a sterile hybrid, remember. So unlikely to set seed. So if you want more of this, you've simply got to 
split it at the right time of the year, which is usually early spring. Now, when these actually go over, so when they start what I call blowing, like a normal thistle would do, it starts blowing all over. This one will do exactly the same, but there'll be no viable seeds. And I will then chop it back down and it will start growing again and give me a late flush of flowers. It's always a bit disappointing when it gets to that stage because I absolutely love it when it's at this phase. Really nice. There's a couple of plants in there, but they get to be quite a clump in the end. They're just clumpers. They're not spreaders or runners. Just clumpers, but slowly making a bigger clump year on year, really. So this is one plant you must get. One little little daisy-like plant you really need to get. And this is Erigeron Karvinsky anus, the Mexican flea bane. Now, as we get further along, some of these will be a cream... Uh, pinky cream colour or pinky colour, some are white, I can't see any that are, are the usual cerisi type as well, it's a bit of a mixture really, it's a self seeder, goes everywhere, it's definitely worth getting, definitely worth having in your garden, I let it grow on its, on its own accord on here, I simply planted one plant at the top of the steps, in that corner, and left it, that one, the original one since died, so these plants have a shelf life of about, I'd say, th good three years, and often longer. And after that point, it'll probably just die away, but it will leave you with all its progeny. Babies everywhere. Some people don't like it because they reckon it's too invasive, but it's not. It's perfect. The perfect choice. If you went into the garden centre and bought just a single plant of that, you're looking at eight quid. So worth growing one and then letting it self seed so another geom here and this one is totally tangerine another sterile hybrid that needs chopping back and i chop it back all the time once it's finished but it's it just flowers and flowers and flowers and it never really stops so that's a really nice a nice gm to have it's quite sturdy, quite well, one of the bigger ones, really. That I'm not, I haven't got that many GMs. I've got about four different types in this garden, but that's by far the tallest and the most clumping, the most strong of the of the four I have. This is Cornus Cusa. Now, Cornus Cusa is supposed to be this particular one should be China Girl. I bought it as China Girl, and again. Try not to defend nurseries at all because, you know, they're doing a job and they're selling as a plant that should be what it says on the label. But labels get mixed up and often these labels get mixed up in the garden centres. But I don't think so in this case. I think this was a mislabeling at the nursery because this should be pure white. Now, I've seen I've seen other ones of just ordinary Cornus Cusa, pictures of them, and some of them look just like that. So it may be just a standard Cornus Cusa may surprise me as we get older and it may turn into a pure white one. I don't know. I've not had it long enough to to see if that's true. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it's going to be a really nice small tree, that, or a large shrub. And it's near the pergola, cloister pergola here. And I want it to grow right to the top of that. And I will do some pruning. I'll show you that as we go along. I want to give it some sort of a shape, but it's really nice. Now, now, now then, now then, let's have a look at this. Right, this here. This is a teasel, and some naughty person has been walking around my garden and left this seed. And I think I know who it is, but I'm not going to mention no names on here. Now, the problem with teasel is, I love it, but I ain't going to allow that to set any seeds at all. Because teasels can be very, very invasive. One of the gardens I lived in, I left it, I went back to visit it six months later, and it was full of teasel everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So I don't really want it in this garden, although it's good for wildlife. I'll allow it to do its flowering and then I will stop it before it seeds. So if you do have teasel, it'll have a spiky feel about it on the back, which it has. And on the back of the leaves, that is. All along there. And then you'll know you've got teasel. And this is Lamium ovala. Not at its best at the minute, but it continues to flower. It's been the best it's ever been for me this year, but those leaves are, are quite nice and lovely. 
So that's another one that's still flowering. So it's now rose season. The roses have started. And this is very, very floriferous this year. There is hundreds of them. I really ought to do some regular deadheading on these. They are going over quite quickly, actually, some of them. Well, this is this is the colour that I like the most, that colour there. I don't... The other one, it's gone kind of a pasty colour. I fed it well, and it's got a little bit of spot in there, a little bit of rust. I did the garden show this morning on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, and I had this very question about this very rose. And unfortunately, you've got to tolerate this. So if you've got this problem, remove them, and then get rid of those. Burn them, put them in the bin. Don't put them in the green bin. Burn them and put them in the black bin or whatever. Get rid of them. You don't want to be carrying that on to the uh, to the next rose. But it's it's generally a good one. It's not always got rust. It's quite a good quite a good one. And the bizarre thing about this one is it can be both a shrub and a small climber, as it is here. And it looks absolutely wonderful. And this side as well. And this is the idea. Growing up the cloister pergola, doing its thing. Amish there, he's having a bit of a shock. I put the little fountain in there just to get some, just to get that little pool there aerated. He likes to go in there and drink. Okay, so this is another Astrantia, and this one's called Roma, and it's quite a nice one. I really like this one. Very small, diminutive really, and the flower heads are not as big as the ones I've shown you earlier. But, nevertheless, it's nice. And if you don't, the trouble with the Strantes is they're very, very promiscuous and they seed everywhere as well. The good thing about them being promiscuous is we find new cultivars as a result of that. But this has a soft rose colour, I guess you could call that. It's a really nice one and it's sterile. So if you're looking for one... If you like Astrantes but don't get it, then go for that one because it's sterile. So we've got Melica uniflora next to it, the little grass. Now the downside to this grass is once it starts seeding, the, the main clump tends to die away. You can cut it once it's seeded and, and it will give you a little bit of a another flush, but not much really. It's an early spring or late spring, early summer grass well it goes in any area to be honest it'll go in shade it goes in sun it'll go anywhere really and i hope to find lots and lots of those at some point now this is still looking great this area it looks absolutely superb i absolutely love this border we've got another geranium now this was here when i got here this particular geranium it was everywhere up the top of the garden and i split it and I believe it to be Johnson's Blue. It's certainly matching the criteria of Johnson's Blue as far as I'm aware. And it's great. It's a great geranium and a great doer. And I've split it into several several plants and I've dotted them all over the place. But it's doing really well. There's another clump here. That's doing well as well. I've, I've found today, as I've been looking around, that the ones that are out in the sunshine are less intense blue than, say, this one. I mean, if you look at that particular flower there, that's definitely getting shaded out and it's definitely a more intense blue. So bear that in mind when you're planting them. It may help. Another euphorbia. This is Palustrus, Wallenberg's Glory. Still continuing to flower. Will be setting seed at some point. In fact, he's starting to do that on those, but I've noticed that some new flowers are coming up as well. So that's nice to see. Now, Rian Palmatum, as I said before, we've we've definitely got it down to Tanguticum. Rian Palmatum Tanguticum, but I think I did mention that on one of my other videos at some point. Now, as I said, when it flowers, and it's flowering now, as you know, at seven foot, that. Easily seven foot in the air. Beautiful. Looks great. And it's got two of them, so it's got twins. And they're great, but once they start setting, once those seeds start setting, it has this annoying habit of starting to let its leaves die. But I've been watering it again, and it, what I've found is it does actually encourage new leaf growth, and it is doing just that, because I've got this garden open 
this month and next month and I want these I want this plant to look good because it is a bit of a star of the show or star of the garden at the minute so hopefully I'll be able to keep that going and when them flowers get a little bit further on I will chop them down I just like the statuesqueness of them at the minute so I don't really want to get rid of them I want them to stay there for now and hopefully we can keep some leaves going another GM this was given to me and it's a semi double looking at it and it's called Alabama Slammer and it really does zing out in the garden you can see it everywhere you everywhere you walk if you've got a sight of it so that's quite nice of the gym it's the Sorbus Ravens bill and it's the last looking oh yeah there's one or two others are still flowering but it's late flowering this one really and very small I expected it to be a lot bigger than this I do believe over time it will get bigger but I think I've just happened to buy a small plant when it's been when it's been uh, grafted on at the bottom there you can see and it's maybe one of the later ones you know the, the last little bit they had the run to the family maybe who knows but I like it it's nice now this is Amsonia and it's Ernst Pagels and it's not fully out yet but I want to show you it just in case we miss the show. It has this lovely blue. Now they're going to open up into some star-like flowers when they do finally come out but they look very interesting. It's new in this year. I thought I was going to lose it again because I'm not very successful with um, Amsonias in this garden. But it's not letting me down now. I've been feeding it and making sure it's got plenty Plenty of feed to get it going, and it's, it's working now. This is a Persicaria. I think it's now called them Plexiclorus bistorta. Not sure, but it's definitely Persicaria bistorta as far as I'm concerned. And it's quite nice. It's losing a lot of colour now, simply because of the time, the time scale. So this is Alien Globemaster, or should be. the ones I showed you earlier which I thought was gladiator but I know these are definitely not these are Globemaster because I remember planting these and they're looking absolutely superb I just love alliums they're just they're a little bit short flowering they don't flower for long but, but Globemaster is one of the longest flowering alliums you can get so it has a it has a bit of a scent a little bit of a scent, a bit of a, I don't know, nondescript really. But it is a bit of a scent of some description. If you've got one, go and have a sniff of it. So there's another Sorbus, and that one's Autumn Spire, and that one is still flowering. Again, oh, I ain't shown this one yet, so why am I saying again? Another Persicaria. This is Persicaria Alpina, or Polymorpha, both names are accepted. And it does really well. Now, I once described this as the flowers smelling like fox pee. Mm, and yes, they do. <laughs> if you've ever smelled fox pee, that's what it smells like to me. But nevertheless, it is a beauty. And it's a clumper. Most persecutors are clumpers. So don't worry about them running. They won't run. That's a persecutor. I'm calling it uh, polymorpha because that's what I've always grown it as. It can be called alpina, as I said. We'll stick with that name. Now we'll go around the back of the shack. It's because I remember seeing another Persicaria around here. Somewhere anyway. Oh, we'll have a look at this while we're here. Another Digitalis. This one's a real nice one. And I can't really do it justice on here because it doesn't want to focus in. Ah, there you go. It's a beauty. Absolute beauty. It's actually got some creamy yellows to, towards the back of that bell. Where the ants head in. Oh, further back. And it's really nice. It's, I don't think it's coming through on here, but nevertheless, it's a beauty. Just plain old digitalis, but really nice. So here's some more Johnson's Blue. Geranium Johnson's Blue. And as I said, if they're in a bit of a shady area, they're a lot bluer, a lot more intense. And I will cut them back once they've finished flowering. got more geraniums here I don't know which this one is I honestly don't know what it is it's a nice pinky color I got them I got it off the same friend who I keep saying never never labels them she never does 
So this is Tanguisoba. And I think it's Acusinensis. We bought it as a very, very tiny little plant that I actually thought had died away. So I didn't really, didn't really take much notice of it. But I am convinced that's what it is. It's an Acusinensis type. This is Centaura. Montana, just the ordinary plant, but very, very nice indeed it is too. And I like that one. And last year it was a massive clump in here. Yeah. I've got grass here and I'm trying to think what I've planted. I don't remember planting that. Do you know, I, I, I reckon that might be a blooming wild plant. I'll leave it alone and we'll see what, I'll let you know, I'll let you know the outcome on that. It looks like a just an ordinary grass. Well, we're up here, let's sneak through here. There's more geraniums here. And as usual, I can't remember the name. I'm not a big geranium collector, but I do have lots of them. And I do like them because they're like the backbone of a, a perennial border if you can get enough in there. And that one's about two foot, just over two foot, looking really nice. Another Astrantia, this one's called Shaggy. Really nice type. It's not fully out yet, but I wanted to show you it because you know it is where it is at the moment. It's looking looking pretty good. This is Telema grandiflora, and it's got these lovely little flowers, and they're heavily scented. Yeah, they have still got the smell. It's still there. It's lovely. So if you want a dry a dry area plant, that's the one to go for. Mm. The philectrums are not flowering yet. That's a shame because they would look good on this film. But they have set the seed heads. But they're not flowering, so we'll show you this aqualegia. <laughs> and this is quite a dark one. I've got several around this can, different types. And that's a very dark coloured one. But I don't know what it is again. Oh, hang on. I've got another. Oh, oh there's, there's a grass growing in this. This is what this is. I've got grass growing in this. This is actually a daylily, an amaricalis. A very small one that was already here. So we'll, not, we'll not mention that at the minute because it's got loads of grass in it. This is salvia, and it's salvia caradonna. It's one of the one of the best, really. And it's, at the back of it is my my Muriel's gift, Astrantia. So that, quite a nice pairing, actually. That an happy accident. And behind that, we have that Nifophia that I still think is Collison's. Not confirmed yet, but it is a beauty. All Nifophias are stunning. 